better at safety than we already are, you know. But how do we really achieve target zero? By taking a look at the real truth about success. It's about communicating safety to others and it's about being accountable for our own safety. So it's influence and action. So how do we develop those relationships to get people to really watch our back and have us be willing to watch their back? Make sense? You guys, remember the old TV show Bonanza? Was that a believable show? The story of a 50-year-old dad and his three 48-year-old sons were that show? <laughs> Nobody believes that show, right? <laughs> so, some things may be true, they're hard to believe. Here's what's important about safety. There are people out there that believe things, there are people that believe things so strongly, they look for reasons to prove what they already believe is true. I'll say it again. They're just looking for reasons to prove what they already believe is true. That means they're not open to new ideas and new concepts. So let me give you an idea of how a safety presentation doesn't work consistently. It happens all the time. Here is an here is example of a non-working safety presentation. Everybody gather around for the safety presentation. Uh, listen, uh, let me tell you about uh, the new way. We've got a new way of doing things. First of all, the old way is bad. It's not safe. I can't believe we even did it. I'm sorry we even <laughs> came up with this idea. It's horrible. Forgive me. The old way is horrible. New way is good. New way, the new way is good because it's, uh, it's new. So I like to put white out on the computer screen and do it the old way because I'm old. Yeah. So let's get real. The reason that people don't want to change is because nobody wants to be a senior beginner. Yeah. Nobody wants to wake up in the morning and, 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 and realize that what they've known all these years, what they're used to, is no longer applicable to what's happening. So what are they going to do? They're going to cling to the old way no matter what. If you put somebody in a position where they lose their value and they think their expertise is not as important, statistically they are less safe. I said earlier, people who feel valuable are much safer and can have fewer acting than people who don't feel valuable. So that's why those messages don't work. You're telling people everything you know doesn't apply. Make sense? So what's working? Very simple. Different message. Everybody gather around the safety meeting. Look. Uh, let's talk about the old way. It, it must have worked. We did it for 25 years. I hoped it worked. We did the best we could, right? And we're going to talk about the new way, but let me show you how the old way and the new way are similar. They draw every similarity they possibly can between the old way and the new way. Once they've, once they've exhausted all the similarities, they go, okay, great. Let me show you how the new way now has some benefits. Then they list those same benefits. Similarities first and differences second. Similarities first and differences second. Very simple concept. We want to make sure that when you're communicating with people that they can still feel valuable and you just achieve that any way you can and that's a good way to do it. We've seen, I've worked with Shell and uh, Chevron uh, over the years, we've seen them transition to those kinds of concepts to make sure people feel valuable with what they already know and how it connects to the new things that they should know. Important. If you criticize others' ideas about safety, they'll almost never use yours no matter how good they are. I got promoted from a field level uh, a supervisor up to a office, a regional supervisor, and then up to corporate headquarters where I was the boss. Oh yeah, young boss. Thank you. I was young. I looked fantastic back then, man. Oh yeah, I looked good. Thank you. I was 27 years old, yep, and all of my employees were older than I was. Oh yeah, young boss. And I got to work that first day. I, I met my people. I called them my people. I said, people. <laughs> In my infinite wisdom, I will lead you to the promised land of success, all your hopes and dreams and ideas and safety innovations, all those ideas. Forget about all that. We're going to do things a special way. And that way, it's called my way. Yeah. And if it's not my way, it's the. Was I effective? No. no. They, no they, they made up a special name for me. They called me punk ass manager. Yes, <laughs> they called me. It is hard to be effective when you're punk ass manager. And I learned a big lesson. And that is, if you make people feel important, you and what you have to offer is a lot more important to them. Um, if you make people feel valuable, it's interesting. People who feel valuable statistically have half of the accidents of the people who do not feel valuable. So making people feel that way, making them feel important is huge. And that means when it comes to communicating safety, it's all about judgments. Yeah. <laughs> who had the communication problem? I did. Big lesson in life, big lesson in safety. Everybody knows something you don't. Anybody you work with knows something you don't. The minute that you think that you know so much and you are so skilled that you can't be hurt, in that moment, wisdom leaves you just like that. What's really weird is your intelligence and your talent and your knowledge. It all stays. It's the wisdom that leaves you. So our research showed that in communications between human beings, uh, trying to help each other, support each other, I mean, trying to be our brothers and sisters keepers, that there was a breakdown. And that breakdown 
of communication cause uh, accidents and incidents. So the thing is, is that what's happening is when someone says, I've got a problem, the correct answer is, yes, you do. Yes, you do. I can do it by looking at you that you have a problem. <laughs> Agreement is the foundation of accountability. Very simply put, people are much more likely to agree with those who've agreed with them first. So when you're talking to someone and you're having a conversation, just because you can solve somebody's problem in your head in seven seconds because you're a genius doesn't mean that you should. You don't have any influence. A percentage of people believe you're calling them stupid when you say their problems aren't problems. So some people aren't able to communicate safety at all because they've got those barriers. It makes a mixed message. You ever heard a mixed safety message? Here's a mixed message. Uh, listen, uh, uh, be safe, but hurry up. <laughs> I mean, what I mean is don't be so safe we can't make money. Yeah, I know. How does that work? Not very well. So here's a standard and better safety message. You know what? Do the best you can between safety guidelines. We need to do the best job we possibly can, the best way we can do it between safety guidelines. When you're outside of those state safety guidelines, stop and rethink it. If you get outside the safety guidelines, stop and rethink it. Simple message, easy. Mixed messages cause a lot of issues. Remember that the key to safety is being present in the moment. Are you present in the moment? When you're walking downstairs, are you actually looking at the stairs? Or are you on the phone? Are you present in the moment? When there's an accident, you know what they always say when they interview the guy? I don't know. Uh, I just wasn't thinking. Well, yeah, you were. You were thinking about something else. You were thinking, just not about what you were actually doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Once again, it's that person cutting paper in the office. What do you do? I'm cutting paper. And they often think about lunch, you know, like maybe sliced beef or a sandwich or something. <laughs> so let's be very clear that though as much as I'd like to say that you ought to do what I do, we're not the same. We need each other. But I'm responsible for you when it comes to safety, and I'll tell you why. One of the biggest problems we have is older people giving a weird message to young people about safety, and it's about talking about how brave we were back in the day when we didn't have all that safety stuff. Well, they got to do all the man, back when I was been starting out here. I just we just got down there naked with a Q-tip, and there's just nothing. <laughs> you know, they're all got helmets on and walking around and being safe. And, yeah, that's the problem. But we need each other. Is that true? Do we need each other? We do. I need you. You're the future. You're the future. I need you, and you need me to get promoted into that future. <laughs> all right. All right. So we we need each other, right? Make sure you're not the one causing a safety issue. That's important. We're role models. You know that? We're all role models. You can't lead by example if you're a bad example, right? My shop teacher also uh, in high school had three fingers. <laughs> he knew what to do. He just wasn't very good at it. He'd go, OK, we're talking about safety. We're talking about safety. Let's talk about, let's talk about saw safety. Pick up that saw, young man. <laughs> My dad is 80 years old and he is fantastic on a computer. However, five years ago, he wasn't. Five years ago, my dad wasn't very good. Five years ago, my dad sent me his very first email. He just said, damn it. That's all it said. That's all it said. That's all it said. <laughs> two words. Just two words. But last Christmas, last Christmas, my dad bought all my family's presents online. I don't know. Of course, he. He bought me a, a nightgown and wife's chainsaw, but he's <laughs> eight years old. Uh, my dad knows that action and adaptability create opportunity. And I asked my dad, why would you learn, he was retired from people's gas systems in Florida, and I said, why would you want to learn how to use a computer at your age, retired and all that? And he said, well, I don't like living in a world where the tool of the day is beyond me. I don't want to live in a world where the tool of the day is beyond me. What's the tool of the day for you guys? Communication being influential in safety. Can you influence each other? Can you communicate with each other and make safety happen? If we are brothers and sisters keepers, can we really conduct ourselves that way because we've got that kind of relationship? That's the tool. That's what we're seeing around the world that are driving accidents and incidents down. Very important. The reality of it is there have already been incidents and already been accidents in the world. Don't we think we've seen enough? I mean, isn't Target Zero about saying, I don't want to learn from my mistake, I want to learn from things that have already happened? That makes sense? They've already happened. Yeah. Definitely. I want to learn mistakes of others, not from my own when it comes to safety. The people who believe they're valuable have much fewer accidents and incidents than those who believe they're not valuable. Huge situation. 
We are our brothers and sisters keepers. Let's make it happen. And that's the real truth about safety success. I'm Garrison Wynn. Thank you so much. Thank you.